This problem involves a statically indeterminate beam with a non-uniform cross-section. In this regard, it may be the most challenging problem of this chapter. So, the beam is statically indeterminate because it is constrained by a wall on the left and a roller on the right. So, if we draw its free body diagram, we have more unknowns than equilibrium equations. And of course, the beam has two segments. The one on the left has the bending stiffness to EI and the one on the right the bending stiffness EI. Our task is to determine the reaction forces. So, because we have both non-uniformity and statical indeterminacy, we would like to consider two decompositions. The first decomposition addresses statical indeterminants. I simply remove the roller at B and I replace it with the reaction force R sub B. This force is unknown, but the condition for finding this force is imposing the condition that the deflection at B in this beam is equal to zero simply because it is equal to zero in the original beam. So from now on, I will focus on this statically determined beam. Now, to deal with non-uniformity, I simply cut this beam at C, and this generates a free body diagram of the right beam, and it also generates a cantilever beam, and uh, the shear force and bending moment are applied to both beams, of course, and uh, they're chosen consistent with the sign convention. So both of them chosen as positive. So now, at this point, I would like to have a strategy how we deal with these two beams. Here is a multi-step strategy. It begins with analyzing the free body diagram for the right beam. It will give me the values of BC and MC in terms of Q and RB. Then I will apply these forces to the left beam. And now I can calculate the displacement and angle at C in this beam by superposing the distributed load, the applied force, the applied couple, and of course I will do these calculations using my tables. Once I have the deflection and angle at C, I will focus on this beam and I will claim the following. This beam undergoes bending due to the force R sub B and the distributed load Q. But also I know that at this point, the deflection of the beam is V sub C and theta C, and V sub C is lowercase V sub C, so the deflection at C and the slope at C as determined from the analysis of this beam. This allows me to combine these factors, right? Four factors. The load, this load, the rigid body translation associated with the deflection of C and the rigid body rotation associated with the rotation at C to determine the deflection at B. 
then I set d sub b equal to zero. This gives me r sub b. And now I can draw the free body diagram either of the entire beam or of this beam to determine the reaction forces at A. So let us see how this strategy is implemented. So first step, I look at this free body diagram. I write down equilibrium equations. My y-axis are downward, is downward. And so the equations are simple and I obtain the answers written here. Next step, I take these values of V sub C and M sub C and I apply them to the left beam. And here I split this beam into three loading cases distributed load, applied force, applied couple, and for each of these cases, I will use the superposition rule. At this stage, I am done with the first two step, and now I go into the next step to compute V sub C. It's a bit longer than other steps, but conceptually, it should be pretty simple. So here's my beam under uniformly distributed load. Here is the table. I'm interested in the deflection and slope at the tip. So I'm looking at these two equations and here they are. I literally copy them. The only difference is I'm using the stiffness 2EI rather than EI. So now I consider the second load, the point force at the tip. The table is here. That's the deflection and slope. I am interested in, and here's the equation. Of course, the force is QL minus RB, and the stiffness is 2EI. The final load is the couple. Again, here's the table, the deflection, the slope, I use here minus sign because my couple is counterclockwise and the tabulated couple is clockwise. And now I have all three individual cases and I can put together the entire story of the BM. And here we go. That's the deflection due to the distributed load, the force, the couple. The same idea for the slope. I just collect the three slopes obtained from analyzing basic loads. And this gives me the expressions of V, C, and theta C in terms of the loads R sub B, the reaction force at B, and the applied load Q. Now, I am done with the most time consuming step, right? And I am ready to proceed to analyzing the right beam. Now I'm ready to deal with the right beam. I observe that this beam translates at C and rotates at C. So in a way, this is a cantilever beam 
with a special wall. This wall moves downward by d sub c and it rotates clockwise by theta c. In addition, this wall bends due to the distributed load q and the reaction force r sub b. So the deflection at b could be viewed as a superposition of four actions. The translation of the wall at C, the rotation of the wall at C, the bending action of the uniformly distributed load, and the bending action of the reaction force. Now we can do the algebra and we obtain this expression for V sub B. Of course, we now set V sub B equal to zero because in the original beam, that's what it is. And this gives us the equation for calculating R sub B. And that's what it is. And this is part of my answer. This is one of the reactions. Now we're almost there, right? We are left only with one item on our agenda. And to do that, I will draw the free body diagram for the entire beam. It brings the reactions at A and some of the forces and some of the moments give me the answers for RA and 